Okay, so so far we've been using strings just to write things like hello world on the screen, um, just in, you know, just for outputting things, and we've been storing things in uh, variables like integers and doubles. But something else we can do is we can have another variable type called string, just like this. And this is good for saving strings. So let's maybe make um, let's make three different variables here. Let's say string part one, and let's maybe put engineer just like that. Okay. Um, Maybe let's call this part one. Uh, let's make another one, string, oh, let's say part two. And we can say, we'll put a little four in there. And then string, let's say part three. All right, and we will assign the string free into there, just like that. Okay, finish all those off with semicolons. And what we can do is, here, if we just go like this, we can see out uh, maybe part one. Oops, part two, and then part three. Okay, just like that. Now, if we just go compile this, um, give it one second, and we run that, there we go. It says engineer for free. And those are actually three separate strings. Um, you know, they just, we wouldn't put spaces in between them. So, what we could do here if we want um, to separate strings, maybe we could go like this, and then we could just use our conventional string, you know, that we've been using like that. Um, just put spaces in between all of them and then when we go compile that and run it we're gonna see that now it's printing spaces so something else we can do is we can store strings in strings um, let's delete this uh, like that uh, let's delete that something else we can do is maybe say um, let's define another string called let's say whole name and what we can do is in this we can have um, part one plus part two plus part three. Okay, simple enough. And then we can just see out um, what do we have? Whole name. Awesome. And then end line. So when we go build this, I think you get the point. Basically, whole name without spaces if we wanted to. Again, just like the same thing before, we could save the spaces into the string. Um, for example, if I just went like this, um, now when we do this, now when we compile it, you're going to see that that space is actually included in the string. Okay, so this is useful. Maybe you want to make a list of names or something. You have name one, name two, name three, and put a bunch of people's names in here. Um, something else we could do is, um, sometimes it's good to have, uh, here, we'll take this out, pretend that never happened. <laughs> Um, what we can do is we can find maybe the length of a string or we can find uh, substrings within strings. So first of all, we can um, we can find out how many letters are in our string um, by assigning here. Uh, it's an integer, we do like this, and let's call it n. And uh, what we do is we're using a member function. Um, this It looks a lot like this, this whole name. Like this is the name of our function uh, of our string that we're going to use, and then we can invoke this with dot notation, is what they call it, and see it's already prompting us there for length, and just go like that. So now when we see out um, n, just like that, and line, um, we're going to see it's going to tell us how many characters are in our string when we run it. So there we go. We're not seeing out anything else anymore. The only thing we're seeing out is the number of characters. And sure enough, if you count this up, it is 13. OK. Um, now the other thing I said is we can find substrings. And sometimes this is a really useful thing that we want to do. Um, so we have a, we can leave that here, I guess. We don't really need to delete it yet. Um, so if we want to find a substring, say we want to extract maybe just engineer for this, or just the four maybe, or maybe just the three, right? We can take out a certain number of characters and just make a new string with that, a substring. So uh, what we do is we have to define another string, the variable type is string, and let's just call it maybe sub, or we could call it sub string, maybe just sub because that's shorter. Um, and then what we can do is we can assign this like this. We put in the name again, whole name, and now we do sub str. So basically, it just stands for sub string. And here you can say it's prompting us for the size, type, position, and size type. So basically, all that means is we can just shorten that too. We can put in the the position of the first where we want to start the substring. So if we want to start here, this e is at position zero, 
n is at position 1, g is at position 2, i is at position 3, and so on. So what we can do, if we want to start off with engineer, maybe we can take the eng. So we would start at position 0, and then we put in the length of the string we want. So eng, we want it to be 3 characters long. So there we go, and what we can do is we can see out sub and line, and let's look and see what we get. Uh, looks like I forgot a semicolon. There we go. And uh, it doesn't really matter that I haven't used that integer n. So, anyways, there we go. There we look at that. We're printing out e n g. So, what we could do if we wanted to maybe print out the four only, well, we'd look at this, and this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, this starts at position 8. And we want it to be one string long. So, if we go and build that, it looks like that. We're going to print out that four. This four is now our substring of whole name, that string that we called it. So anyways, that's a quick introduction to using strings as variables, and I'll see you in the next video, and we'll talk about structures.